Welcome to the Winterberry Wildlife Tech Series. In this video, I'll be taking a closer look at the StealthCam DS4K Ultimate trail camera. I'll start with an overview, give some examples of video, and end with a teardown. The DS4K Ultimate features a clamshell enclosure. With the case open, you can access the battery cartridge on one side and see the alphanumeric display, the on-off button, and keypad for the user interface on the other side. One of the first things I noticed just looking at this camera is that it's quite a bit larger than some other newer trail camera models. For example, here it is next to a Browning HP5, and you can see it's almost an inch thicker. The reason for this is that the DS4K Ultimate uses 12 AA batteries versus 8 or even 6, and these are arranged in two layers, thick and a battery carrier which clips in and out from the back camera. The removable battery carrier is a nice feature and really makes using the clamshell case a lot easier. Shifting our attention to the other side of the open camera, we see a two-line alphanumeric display, the on-off switch, and the keypad for setting up the camera. The alphanumeric display features a large, high-contrast con lettering, which I found easy to read even in sunny conditions in the field. On the other hand, it's not a full video display, so you can't use it to review photos or videos. The area at the top of the camera is not a display, it's just a decal with contact information on it. Next, we'll look at some video. In this first sequence, Take I show side-by-side no -side video yes. comparisons of different Brown video resolutions. I found there to be little practical difference between these, even when I zoomed in 16x with the video editing software. I did find the sound on this camera to be excellent, possibly the best I've heard. Here is an example of night video. There are no flash settings on this camera. Here is an example of video of animals taken at night. The doe and fawn are in our lawn on our lawn, which doesn't seem to provide the best contrast in IR. This is not necessarily an issue with the camera. Okay, let's take this camera apart and see what's inside. I start by turning the camera off and removing the battery cartridge. The next step is to remove the gasket which seals the case. A word of caution here, the gasket is not very rugged and is tightly glued in several spots to hold it in place. I tore it when I tried the first time, which is why this video shows a replacement gasket I made. Consider using a sharp hobby knife to cut away the glue around the gasket if you try but be prepared to make a replacement gasket if necessary. With the gasket off, we see the serial number and the six screws that hold the faceplate in place. We'll take these out. Note that one screw, the one on the right by the lower hinge, is smaller than the others, so we'll set it aside to remember. With the four screws out, the face plate comes off like this. Now we can see inside the camera. A few things to point out on the main circuit board. Here is the main image sensor, and here is the PIR sensor. This is a large heat sink permanently attached to the board which covers the main processor. You can see there are several sets of wires which attach to the board and go off to other parts of the camera. I'll point out what those are. The bottom cable goes off to the microphone, this pair of wires is for the external power supply adapter. This one goes to the battery case. And finally, this pair goes to the IR LED array. One of the things I noticed is that these wires are simply soldered onto the circuit board without, without any type of removable connector. These types of connections can be sources of failure due to cold solder joints. Looking at the other side of the case, we see the MEMS microphone, which is glued in here with an opening facing down towards the ground. Despite this position, I found these cameras have excellent audio. Here is a standard center pin barrel connector jack for external power. Here is the IR LED circuit board. As we move up, we see the window for the main camera sensor and the Fresnel lens for the PIR detector. The next thing we'll do is take out the LED board. It comes out with four screws, which I'll remove now. With these four screws out, the assembly lifts out like this, 
And now we can see the six high power LEDs used to illuminate nighttime images. Now we'll take out the main circuit board. There are six screws holding it in place, which we'll remove now. With the main circuit board out, we can see inside. Here is a flex cable which goes to the keyboard. The alphanumeric display is attached here on the underside of the main circuit board. Here is the shielded SD card holder. I'm not sure what these covered items are, perhaps part of the power supply. Up in the top right corner is the coin cell used to power the clock when the main batteries are removed. In this camera, the coin battery is mounted in a holder, allowing it to be easily replaced if it fails. And now I'll put everything back together, reversing the steps when taking it apart. Now I'll turn it back on to make sure it works. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more camera trapping technology.